Hello everyone, are we ready for this? This is a sold as a Wi-Fi Tron. 300 megabits per second. Signal extender, range repeater, booster, internet amplifier. Um, often sold, or at least when I last saw some videos of it, sold as um, this magical device unlocks the the limited speed that your ISP provide by getting rid of your internet usage report and some other dubious claims. I'm expecting this to be like uh, some of the other ones that I've uh, reviewed or tested. Um, the Agatol one from Amazon um, probably about a year and a half ago. Uh, this is probably going to be very similar, very similar in performance and the performance is not going to be, what well, I suspect, not going to be very good. But let's uh, find out. Hopefully it's better than the Range XTD, which was downright dangerous for use in the UK. What does it say on the box? Ex uh, Wi-Fi repeater extends the range of your wireless LAN easily. Access the internet, blah, blah, blah. Nothing exciting there. Different languages. Supports only 2.4 gigahertz wireless networks. So... Uh, even though this is 300 megabits per second, supposedly, um, where does that say up there? Uh, I would expect the performance to be no more than about 100 megabits per second, um, if that, but we'll find out. Sports WPA2, and antennas integrated in it. It has a little diagram about where you're supposed to put it, and system requirements. Interesting that WLAN clients must support at least WPA, which is um, the slightly newer standard. Yet on this bit over here, it says that it supports WEP, which is the very old wireless encryption standard. So, hmm, interesting. And that's about all that's on the box. Quick installation guide, we'll have a look at that. And there's the the device itself. So get rid of that. What do we have? A very, very light device. So build quality is very plasticky. A LAN port and a reset port on the left side. Sticker with its serial number and MAC address, which is probably better than uh, some of them. Default IP address listed, which is also good. Looks very much like the uh, Agatil, um default IP address. And not a lot else. UK plug, not removable, which is the uh, problem with that Range XTD, is that it had multiple types of... Uh, regional plug and you could easily remove those but the trouble is when you removed it first off it was super easy for it to just pop off without um, pressing any release button but also um, on the bit that went into the mains plug there was exposed metal so you could leave that in the mains plug and people could come along and press it and um, and get an electric shock WPS button on the front of that let's have a quick look at the install guide I'm just going to run over that. If you need to read any of this, just uh, pause the video. And everything else in another language. Whoop. That's never going to go back in the uh, the way it came out. There we go. Right, let's plug this in and see what it does. Going to have to move the camera for that, so uh, give me just a moment. Okay, let's plug it into um, which one? Plug it into that one. Okay, let's turn it on and see what happens. So, I've got a power light on, solid. 
and the Wi-Fi light. Okay, that seems to be all it does when it's initially switched on. I'm just going to show you. Um, I'm connected to a wireless router that I'm testing with. I don't have full reception, so on my computer it is showing as uh, two out of three bars, maybe um, a little bit less. If I do a speed test, we will see what performance I get out of going direct to that wireless access point. So that shows us 254 megabits per second down, and about 130, maybe 120 megabits per second upload. The repeater is going to be in an exactly the same place as the, the laptop I'm testing. Um, so if anything, it's in a better uh, line of sight to the router. So um, we wouldn't really expect, I'd say, worse performance than, or much worse performance than what you've just seen on that speed test there. Let's see whether I can connect to this repeater. So I see something called repeater underscore 008B08, which I presume is the MAC address that will be on the side of that repeater. Interestingly, that is not the MAC address on the repeater. However, it is at least probably a unique number. It's just saying connecting dot 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 at the moment and is doing absolutely nothing. Which I am actually connected over the wireless. There you go, it says uh, now no internet, uh, but I am connected. So I'm going to go to the IP address, which was on the side of that router, um, that repeater, which is 192.168.11.1. And here we have the web admin interface of that uh, repeater. I want to do language English and log in. Uh, I do not want to, oh interesting, there's no scroll bar but I feel like I'm not at the bottom of the page. Uh, maybe right on the edge of it. Um, I want it in repeater mode because I don't want to use it as just an access point. Uh, we can also do a performance test with it in just access point mode uh, in a minute as well. So it's going to scan for wireless networks that are available. And I'm afraid most of those are going to be blanked out on your screen, but I need to select the router that isn't shown. OK. So my network that I'm testing with isn't shown in this, uh, in this screen, which my laptop was just connected to. OK, figured this one out. The router I was using is so new, it has WPA3 and also WPA2 enabled. Uh, that seems to cause this repeater to not be able to see the network. So I now set it to WPA2 security only. We can now see the network there. Um, so I'm going to fill in the password. Nice of it to star it out, but I like it. Modify the wireless name of the extender. I yes, let's call it extender because then I know which one I'm connected to, and that when I'm doing the performance test, that we're on the correct one. So over on the device itself, the little two arrow symbols have come on, and let's have a look on the laptop. Do I see? Uh, Zyxl with a dash ext. Yes, I do. So I'm going to click on that, click on connect, fill in the password again. The laptop saying checking network requirements and hasn't yet connected me. Connected and secured. Let's just make sure I can get to the internet. And indeed, I can bring up a search and that's working. Let's do a speed test. That was the previous speed test direct to the router when I didn't have full reception. I now have full reception showing in my laptop's uh, wireless status but 
because it's a repeated signal and also this device is incredibly low specification, I'm going to assume that the speed test is going to be less than 100 megabits per second, but let's hope it's not substantially less. So that's better than the, uh, I think the Range XTD, getting half the speed uh, of what I would uh, expect to be non-repeated uh, 2.4 gigahertz wireless. So non-repeated 2.4 gigahertz, I'd expect to be performing about 100, maybe 120 megabits per second. Uh, even though, say, the headline speed on most of these things is 300 megabits, um, you will never get the headline speed. However, what we're doing here is we're using this um, Wi-Fi Tron repeater to pick up that signal and on the same channel repeat it uh, or transmit it again. Um, wireless is a lot of time slots, so you've got d -d 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 of, like data packets. Um, what this repeater is going to be doing or having to do is pick up on one of those time slots and then transmit again on another time slot. Um, so effectively halving the potential speed. So if you get 100 megabits per second not through the repeater and then you connect to the repeater, you'd expect to see about half of that speed. So 51 megabits per second kind of matches my expectations uh, of what to get out of these devices uh, at 2.4 gigahertz at, uh, in effect, 300 megabits per second. Get rid of half of that headline speed because that's the way that these things seem to work. And then get rid of half of that speed again because you're on a repeater. But out of the three really cheap and what I feel like could be nasty Wi-Fi uh, repeaters I've tried, this one actually seems to be the one that um, has been easiest to set up and has given the best performance out of the three as well. Um, that's pretty good. Better than I was expecting. Not something I'd recommend you have because if your internet is slower than... Um, Oh, sorry, it's faster than about 50 or 40 megabits per second. This thing will be the bottleneck. Um, so think about that before buying. And just to note that when you have Wi-Fi mesh systems, for example, the Orbeez, um, you often get the higher end ones which have their own backhaul Wi-Fi radio. So they're not using up time slots on your uh, wireless network that your devices are using. They will go in on... Um, say 5 gigahertz on one channel and then it will backhaul on a different channel to the other Wi-Fi mesh unit um, so you're not chewing up capacity um, on on the channel that all your devices are using. I'm just going to do a very quick ping scan across the network and see whether we can see uh, more than just the router and this computer but no it looks like we've got the router and the computer only. If I set an IP address in the repeater's range, does it then allow me to get to its admin interface? Okay, so it stays on the, uh, the default IP address. What's worrying here is it doesn't look like there's a password to log on. So if you, well, yeah, and all it does is run through the, uh, the wizard again. If you're using this in a public location, then just be aware that anyone on your network can log on and change settings or mess up this wireless repeater. Uh, what I will do now is try wireless access point mode and we'll see what performance we get out of that. I'm hoping, considering we've got 50 megabits per second on the repeating mode, that we'll get about 100 megabits per second on the direct mode. Okay, so I factory reset this to see whether it makes any difference. I'm now connecting to the original name called repeater, uh, zero, zero, something or other. Ah, okay, this time I do have an IP address within my LAN. So I guess uh, before reconfiguring this device as an access point, you should factory reset it rather than just configuring it straight from its um, repeating mode. So can I now run a speed test and what speed do I get? Let's see, I'm hoping 90 to 100 megabits per second. Wow, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so while it is not the most modern technology, this Wi-Fi Tron or wireless repeater is actually not too shabby for the specification and especially for the price that I paid for it on eBay.
there we go. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much. Have a great day.